and this is a basically pure watercolor you'll just block in roughly where your colors are going with a pencil but the entire exercise is going to be done in watercolor so let's start with just drawing in roughly where the track goes very faintly it's just plotting it in so when you lay in your colors you know exactly where you're going and you're going to build the picture and build the detail in with your watercolor rather than build the detail in at the beginning with your drawing so let's start first off cobalt blue and ultramarine and mix up some blue for your sky once again test sheet happy with your blue once again a thin thin wash and wash it into the areas where your sky shows through once again quite roughly like this don't fiddle faddle about slap it in thin glaze though thin wash translucent you don't want to go too thick remember always always nice and thin right burnt sienna burnt tumba alizarin crimson no change my mind a bit less a little bit more burnt sienna again Water it down. There we go. Thin wash the two lines of the track. Thin wash down there. Even wash. There we go. One side and t'other. Having done your track, clean your palette. Viridian, light pale cadmium yellow, the burnt sienna, and you got your first green wash, a bit more cadmium yellow. It's a spring green, so your greens are going to be somewhat lighter and less brown than they become later in summer, fresh after the long winter. On your test sheet, make sure you're happy with it. Add a bit more burnt sienna. Right, you're working on the top. Easiest thing is turn the picture around. Now those areas are white. Around the blue, you're going to start blocking those in. And work a nice pale layer of green all the way around. There you go. Back up the right way again. Thin layer, thin wash. Keep on, keep it nice and even. So you come down to the line, which is the top of the white umbrals of cow parsley that line the sides of the lane. So that's blocked in even where the tree leans across the track like an archway, an old poplar tree. Again, Viridian, yellow and burnt sienna. A bit of extra sketching though to define where I'm going with this because of the white of the umbrals. You want to make sure you keep those white. So then you work that slightly greener green, a bit less yellow in it. All the way down to the front. Keep on building it in. Here we go, section blocked in. Then down the centre of the track where the grass grows. Nicely up to the line there. There you are, one blocked in picture. Here we go. Having done that, you've blocked in your picture. That's your basic foundation layer. Next, we do Viridian, Burnt Sienna, a bit more Viridian, 
pale cadmium yellow. Get your test sheet out. Give it a try on top of the colour before, which is now dry, just to see how it relates to the wash you've done before. There's beauty of your test sheet. You can check it out. And using a very small brush, I'm using the smallest sable. Just dibble the paint on to represent little specks of leaves against the sky and on top of the other green. It takes a while, but slowly work over the whole area of green like that. Gently does it. Little dots of paint, almost vibrating your hand to just put tiny dibbles of paint on. Bring yourself all the way down. Once again, as I said earlier, take yourself to the edge of the picture to make sure when it's framed it goes right up to the mount. Bigger brush and work in blocking larger areas. It's your second wash going on. And this is already taking on that look of leaves against the sky. Don't overdo it, you don't want to lose your sky completely. All over. Small brush, I'm using the two brushes there. Small brush and larger brush for blocking in larger areas. Until the whole tree area at the top is covered. Next we mix up the same as you're doing earlier but a slightly darker green, more of a blue green, grassy green. Test it on the other colours to make sure you've got the right mix and consistency and hue and then start washing a layer down the centre. Give it a curve so you hump the grass in the middle of the track and down over the cow pass in the grasses at the side and the vegetation on the sides of the track. It's your second layer going on. Almost done. Take some dots of it into the cow pass, see where the green shows through. And make sure you leave plenty of bits of the first layer showing through. Right, darken that green now with some brown. So you get a, a nice dark green, add a touch of blue to it, ultramarine, and you produce a holly green. And that you're going to put on where the trees go and down the sides of the track there. Next, burnt sienna, ultramarine. Produce a nice even brown. And with that, start building up another layer on the track. Broken layer. Break up your colour so the, the base colour shows through. So you get the three effects. You get the new colour, the new colour on top of the base colour, and where the base colour th comes through. You've got to bring it down. Just small areas of original showing through. Keeps it light. Down both sides there. Next, back with a clean palette, burnt umber, yellow ochre, more burnt umber, ultramarine. Clean your brush between colours, try not to dirty your colours up. Onto the green on the test sheet. Touch of burnt sienna went in then, just to bring it, warm it up a bit. And then with a Medium sable. Start running into tree trunks. Patiently doing it. Remember that branches start thick and go narrow, as do tree trunks. Don't go thick at the top and thin at the bottom, or do it carefully. And just work in all your tree trunks. Of 
the ones with the ivy there growing up the tree trunks you stop your line just at the top of the ivy so the trunk comes out of the ivy there goes trees plotted in right burnt umber ultramarine alizarin crimson a bit more alizarin crimson ultramarine burnt umber a nice almost black burnt sienna what's he going to do with this I hear you cry it's a mystery to me here we go get it right now this is in fact your dark part of the trunks so you're going to bring this onto the trunks on the side in the shadow just to give you your definition nice fine work dotted into the ivy there which is showing through and just bring this up Comsa, like that to define your trees look where they're starting to jump out the paper at you magical feeling of painting like this as you work it grows and develops such fun to watch amazingly satisfying pastime and cheap too doesn't cost a lot don't need a license to do it nobody's permission here we go now work some of that into the vegetation as well there we go streaks of it in here just to start giving it stalks and presence now we're back to mixing green again viridian burnt umber double check darker still with that you're going to start working in detail in the vegetation along the grass center there goes starting to build up you see bits of each wash show through from the layer before so it gives it a really nice layered quality On this layer, you can start working in little streaks of color to simulate the blades of grass. There you go. Looking tusky down the middle there. Definite grassy feel to it. And of course, you can see all the detail worked in on the vegetation on the sides. Now you've got a much darker green again. And you put in the ivy. Can you see I put the ivy all around those trees? Mix up another green with burnt umber and a touch of cadmium yellow. Double check your color. A bit more yellow. And you're going to work in finer detail on the sides of the track. Now this time start bringing a bit onto the track itself where the grass is invading into the track to soften that edge that goes down the harsh edge you've got in there now start putting a bit more up in the top in the trees just to bring the layers forward to give the impression of perspective with depth and layers of vegetation going away from you all over like that you see it's building up and as you build you balance so as one thing gets darker you'll find something else that becomes lighter in relation to it so you go back and darken it and you pull your picture up bit by bit carefully but always using washes that are transparent and never overmixed do not overdo your color so you keep the painting fresh all the way up there 
little bits of light showing through down the side there. Darken a bit on this side because you want to pull in the ivy to bring your tunnel effect of the trees going down to the archway tree which is down the end there. There we go. Then you can start with dark green again working down the track. Little lines further down bringing back into tussocks of grass further on so you diminish your detail as it goes away into perspective so you build the perspective into the painting. What you see close up is always more detailed than what's in the distance. Here we go, right the way down to the front. So I said keep on down so that when it's framed it covers right to the edge of the picture. You don't get bits of exposed paper where you forgot to paint sticking out. That cow pass is showing up nicely now work in more and more detail into the vegetation at the sides which brings up the white flowers on top makes them stand up a lot better there you go clean palette ultramarine lizard and crimson I tend to do this with all my paintings at this stage you work in the shadow. What I do is I work in a purple wash. I do it with oil painting, acrylic, literally anything, even crayon. And you watch how it jumps. I put it on the test sheet. I'm happy with my purple. Now put it in broken shade down the track. Look at the way it starts to make that picture jump out. It warms the picture. It gives it three-dimensional quality. It's, it's a fabulous process. Almost like magic. I love it. Keep working your purple shadow all the way up the track, then up over the vegetation, below the umbrals, anywhere there might be shade, onto the green. The green still stays green through it, but it gives it that deep shade and shadow and bright light. Dappled shade, that's the word I'm looking for, dappled. All the way up. Nice even layer. And then through the trees and speck it and put branches in. Because if you actually look through trees, the trees, the branches, the leaves in the distance will be purple. So that's what you want to work through. All the way down. So you've worked over the entire picture. Take your time. All those extra branches. It gives an impression of millions of branches, millions of leaves, speckled purple. And then there's a bit of shade on the umbrals of the cow parsley coming down there. Right down. Having done that, the track looks a bit pale, so mix up some burnt sienna, a bit of cadmium red, a warm brownish colour with a touch of ultramarine, put a thin wash on top of the track. Adjust your colour as you go, bigger brush, nice thin wash. Then yellow. And go over it with a yellow wash. I've decided basically the picture's a bit cold. Bring the yellow in. That's warmed it up considerably. There we go. Be quite bold with it. Don't be frightened of it. It's a very, very thin wash. It just warms the colour up. A swift glaze of yellow over it. Once again, back to your ultramarine and alizarin. Make up a purple. A bit of dark brown, burnt umber. Back with a test sheet. 
nice dark color now you can see the trees have gone quite light the tree trunks because of the building up of the greens and the other colors around it in the shadow so you're going to bring them back up into into the balance of the painting so they have more prominence let's get a thin brush and work through a dark layer on top of the trees once again broken speckle it through just to make your trees stand out a lot better you're almost building it as if you were from the the wood itself you know as you're looking at it you've got millions of leaves and branches back into the distance to form a picture and you started in the distance and worked your way forward just bringing them up as you go more and more layers of detail at the end of the time you'll end up with your track going away from you see once again nice dark and put some in that ivy there just to lighten the ivy growing up the tree break it up so it's not quite so flat right viridian ultramarine burnt umber bit more viridian burnt umber those three tend to give you very dark bluey green a bit more blue in it a bit more viridian with that you're going to start speckling in very very fine detail of the grass start very fine in the distance and come forward little streaks to give the grass that tussocky look with blades of grass layer it in nicely and bring it out over the edge of the track can you see where it's encroaching onto the track nature's always trying to take over so there it is trying to grow out where the vehicle tire marks don't go so often again more detail into the side of vegetation there little streaks represent blades of grass stalks all the way up Find fine detail here and there. Always the most detail in the foreground. Make your foregrounds fairly detailed because that's what nature's like. You tend to see that. You'll find that foregrounds are detailed and you go through to less detail in the distance. Mix up more purple now. And you put more shadow in. Nice shade of purple. Bit more blue to it so it's not quite so red. Here we go. And then you're going to come down with a good wash down the track. This is really your definitive definitive wash to bring the tree trunk shadows down where they're casting their shadows across the track. It's a fantastic feeling of depth. right down to the foreground there you go and let that dry it's all over anyway you think there might be some extra shadow basically you can now say that's the painting done leave it at that I always like to have a a splash around with white gouache so there you are mix up your gouache water and I'm going to do a yellow gouache to start with so the deeper of the two cadmium yellows get the color then then whack in the white gouache produce a nice creamy yellow color Try and keep the gouache off your main paint palette and clean it off. Don't let it dry on there. It's messy stuff. 
just like I'm doing, making a mess. With a very fine brush, start dotting in those little yellow dots into the green. You'll find this really makes the picture start to sparkle. Take your time, you don't want great gobs of paint. Very, very fine little dots, almost unnoticeable in there. They just add to the tapestry of colours that come out at you. Purists say you shouldn't use gouache like this, but if it works for you, I'm happy with it. There we go, down the track, put some yellow in there. Little yellow flowers in the grass. Daffodils, not daffodils. What am I talking about? Um, dandelions, buttercups. There we go. All over. Just spotted in. Take your time doing it. One of the secrets is to stay fairly even all over the picture. Don't just do one area and leave it. Some bigger blots of the front there, which are your foreground dandelions and buttercups. Now you start with a white, having cleaned off the yellow. And go down the track, and put little streaks of white in there. Basically do the same over the entire picture as well. Bring in your dots of white on your umbrals in the track. Highlight it. Coming down into the herb robert, put some extra little umbrals growing out below the main ones little collections of dots to make up the flowers. Once again, work over the entire picture, little white dots, little white lines down the branches where it catches the light. Having done that, a bit more white gouache and add some cadmium red to it to make up a pink. Because being spring, there's a little flower called Herb Robert. That tends to grow along the tracks and there were some I noticed on the side of this track. So dot in little pink flowers along there. Be surprised how it adds to the picture as you go along. But you can see the whole process is just building up and building up bits of colour until you achieve the whole. It's very satisfying. Then, I'm using a pen to do this, sign your name, and as I said before, and I repeat, sign it clearly, legibly, and well enough in that when it's framed, the mount does not cover your name up. People tend to write their name so far into the corner, when they put a mount over it, their name disappears. Put it a good inch plus into the picture, in the corner, where it can be seen. <laughs> 